My love for the Fire Pro Wrestling series is pretty well documented at this point. It's hard for me not to get romantic when talking about the Japanese-developed line of wrestling games populated by wrestlers that are questionably similar to real-life personas. I've had some pretty profound moments playing and playing around with these games, but I didn't get into the series until 2007. By that time, the Fire Pro series was already over 15 years old and had already had a few false finishes. In 2007, I was broke. But that didn't stop me from overdrawing my bank account to pick up Fire Pro Wrestling 2 on the Game Boy Advance. Thankfully, here in 2021, I'm doing alright. Enough to import all the Fire Pro games that I've missed out on over the years. How well do they hold up? Well, let's find out. The first game bearing the Fire Pro name was Fire Pro Wrestling Combination Tag for the PC Engine in 1989. And yes, despite the title sounding like a spin-off or sequel, this was indeed the first game in the series. Even though the origins of the wrestling system date back to pro wrestling on the NES. Masato Masuda, the designer of pro wrestling for the NES, also created the Fire Pro system. And just look at this incredible artwork. To think all those teenagers needed to do to stop Jason Voorhees was pull off a perfect Inzigiri. Combination Tag was followed up with Fire Pro Wrestling's second bout in 1991, also for the PC Engine. We'll cover those games in depth at some point, but we're here today to take a look at the first three Fire Pro Wrestling games for the Super Famicom. The Super Famicom would get its first Fire Pro entry with the aptly titled Super Fire Pro Wrestling, with yet another poor soul about to catch a kick to the dome. Cool face paint though. It's been reported that Super Fire Pro Wrestling sold over 39 million copies. Now, I can't verify that with hard numbers, but it definitely sold well enough that you can find copies on eBay for pretty cheap. Which usually means that just about every household in Japan bought it. Okay, it might not be Dragon Quest levels, but it's definitely abundant. Regardless of what the number sold actually is, Super Fire Pro Wrestling solidified the series as a big deal in Japan, and we would end up getting many, many more. So the game must be pretty darn good, right? Well, yeah, for its time, it's quite good. When you consider the other wrestling games out on the market in 1991, I'd go as far to say that Fire Pro beat a lot of them out by a long shot when it comes to gameplay. The graphics are not so good especially by the standards of other early Super Famicom games at the time. But Fire Pro has never really been about graphics. It survived on its nuanced combat engine and evolved by opening up its logic and editing tools to the fans. Super Fire Pro Wrestling, however, is a pretty basic affair. There's no editing of wrestlers, there's no editing of CPU logic. These early games were made to be played. The trademark of the Fire Pro series gameplay is the timing system. From the comments I received on my Fire Pro Wrestling World review, a lot of you really hate this system. And I can see why. Sometimes you hit what you feel is the perfect timing on a grapple and you can still lose, depending on the difficulty. It can be really demoralizing. However, the more you play, the better you get and the better you feel about winning. This gameplay loop rewards those who stick with the series, and I completely understand why people also love this system, as much as other people may hate it. And for those who pick this up and are having trouble with the timing mechanic, the cue is when the wrestlers bend their knees. What really impresses me about this game is the depth on display here. Sure, by current standards, this seems like a pretty standard game but to see the amount and variation of reversals on display is pretty amazing for a game from 1991. Plus, blood! Look at all this blood! Even the referee can get some color! Another amazing feature of the Fire Pro games are the rosters that spit in the face of likeness laws. That's mainly because these laws were quite murky in Japan at the time, leading lots of games to closely copy everything from human likeness to famous music. Super Fire Pro takes full advantage of this as every single wrestler in its roster is a very close representation to real life guys. So Antonio Inoki becomes Victory Musashi, Hulk Hogan becomes Axe Duggan, 
and Shinya Hashimoto becomes Shinya Haramoto. Yeah, some of these are as thinly veiled as a Kraft Singles rapper. But hey, it was a different time, and what a time to be alive it was. Giant Baba was not pleased with this and demanded that his Fire Pro avatar, Great Shiva, be removed from the next game. Baba had his own games to sell, damn it. Each wrestler has a move set to fit their style, along with special and secret moves, like this running attack by Vader. And the types of moves are quite advanced for a game from 1991. The modes on offer here are pretty standard, but there is a bit of flavor. There's a championship series mode where you can play as either a singles wrestler or a tag team. You fight through a ladder of almost every wrestler in the game, and if you can beat them all, you win the world championship. But here's where Super Fire Pro spins this standard mode. For each match you win, you earn a certain amount of points. A pin or submission gets you 5 points, while a DQ or a countout win only gets you 4 points. In order to move to the next match, you need a certain amount of points to qualify. So, you can't just cheese your way to the title, at least not completely. If you do manage to win the gold, you'll be sent through another gauntlet of matches, but this time, you're defending the title. Get to the end and you'll fight hidden character and Japanese legend Ricky Dozon in the singles route, or Bruiser Brody and Stan Hansen in the tag route. If you lose, you can continue and try again. Running through all of this will likely take you about 5 hours for each of the singles path and the tag path depending on how good you are. It's not much to hold my interest these days, but for the time I could see myself getting a lot of play out of it. It starts out pretty easy, but the difficulty picks up with each new wrestler you face. The game also offers an exhibition mode, an elimination team battle mode, and an open league mode, which is a series of round robin matches where points are tracked and the winner of the league is the wrestler with the most points at the end. This seems to be the only way you can simulate matches between the CPU outside of just letting the demo run. Unfortunately, most matches tend to end via countout anyway, so it is what it is. You also have a password system to save your progress, as save batteries weren't really the norm at that point yet. The next Fire Pro on the Super Famicom would release almost exactly one year later in December of 1992, but the series had a few deviations along the way, with a Mega Drive version called Thunder Pro Wrestling Retsuden, which was nearly released in North America as Jesse the Body Ventura's Wrestling Superstars. We'll get to that at some point. And the third release for the PC Engine, Fire Pro Wrestling 3 Legend Bout. With four games released in the span of one year, Fire Pro, like the Japanese wrestling scene itself, was on a roll. So what did the second Super Famicom offering improve on? Well, it only introduces one of Fire Pro's most famous features, the Critical. While not as flashy nor as expansive as we know it today, if a wrestler suffers an injury from a specific submission hold, a bone-crunching sound is triggered and the wrestler will be visibly hurt for the rest of the match. For 1992, this is a pretty neat feature. The Super Fire Pro 2 roster features 25 wrestlers and 3 hidden characters. They took out and replaced about 10 wrestlers, so the roster is quite a bit different. You can also trigger alternate attires with a button combo on the select screen. Super Fire Pro 2 also gives you the ability to select CPU versus CPU and sim exhibition matches, which is my favorite way to play the Fire Pro series. It's just a lot less frustrating. As far as modes go, you're looking at the same set from the first Super Fire Pro game, although the third challenge stage is a handicap tag series here. I do feel like Super Fire Pro 2 is more challenging than the first game, so beware. Otherwise, the game feels like a small skip forward for the series instead of a game-changing sequel. The game sold well and the Fire Pro series rolled on, but Human wasn't going to rest on their laurels. Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3 Final Bout would hit the market a year later, and let me tell you, this feels like a true sequel. Whereas Super Fire Pro Wrestling 2 felt like a lateral movement, the third game to don the word Super knocks it out of the park. Instead of taking away and replacing about the same amount of wrestlers, Super Fire Pro 3 boasts a total of 64 wrestlers, nearly tripling the amount of the previous two games respectively. 
I'm not going to list everyone here, but Human brought back some of those who were missing from the second game while adding a ton of important fighters to the roster. The Steiner brothers, Sting, Gary Albright, Kensuke Sasaki, and on. This makes the replay value shoot through the roof on its own, but Human didn't stop there. On top of the roster boost, a new feature would make its debut that would become a staple of the series for the next few decades. Edit mode allows you to take any wrestler in the game and make edits to their appearance, moveset, and CPU logic. Basically, their AI. You can save them to the game cartridge, an absolutely mind-blowing feature for the time. The name of the mode is why we call our wrestler creations in Fire Pro edits instead of cause like you see in other wrestling games. While it's pretty primitive in its Super Fire Pro 3 form, and you'll need a translation guide or a strong knowledge of Japanese to be able to make comprehensive edits, anyone can make variants of wrestlers in the game at the very least. You have 12 save slots, which isn't a lot, but it's something at least. And the appearance edit is just giving the wrestler parts from another wrestler, but I really can't stress enough how important this feature was and is to the Fire Pro series. And it originated right here in Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3. The game also treats us to some slick new menus. You can really see the progress throughout this game. The wrestlers have more definition in their bodies and more intricate attires. Wrestler stats are now visible on the select screen. There are tons of new moves to use, and we also get an influx of shoot-style wrestling, something that was a big deal at the time in Japan. And yes, it rules. This game is also notable for being Suda51's first game developer credit, something to keep in mind for an upcoming video. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is how incredible the music is, which has been playing throughout this video. The music from all three games makes me want to run through a wall. It's also great to hear the remixes of these songs in older versions like Fire Pro Returns. Human also released another version of the game called Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3 Easy Type, which comes with all the hidden wrestlers unlocked, which is great for someone like me who prefers to sim matches over actually playing the game, but it also removes the edit mode, which feels like a pretty big omission. I love Super Fire Pro Wrestling 3. The first two games for the Super Famicom are a nice base and cool to check out if you're a big Fire Pro fan, but 3 is rich with content. The sim engine and edit mode both would go a long way and get much better than they are here, but if you're a wrestling fan, you can have a great time with this game. Of course, Fire Pro on the Super Famicom would not end there. We would get five more games in the series on the system, including Super Fire Pro Wrestling Special, which is infamous for its story mode that ends... Well, that game needs its own video, so we'll save that for a later date. We'd also get a couple of female-based entries, which I'll also be covering soon as we march our way through the history of the Fire Pro Wrestling series. Thanks for watching this video. Giving the video a rating and dropping a comment really helps feed the beast. I really appreciate all the support and comments that help keep this channel running. Until next time, this is Lex, signing off.